All right, Johnny, how are you today? Good, Stu. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you too. Did you have a good Christmas break? Took a few weeks off? Yeah, yeah. Just finishing my final week off now. I'll be back to work next week. But uh, yeah, it's been a nice oh, break. Good. Uh, good to get some downtime. So yeah. Kids go back to school. You go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> my, kid, I, my kids don't exist yet, but indeed, uh, <laughs> children will be going back to school. That's it. That's it. And uh, did you get away or did you just spend your time in, uh, in Madrid? Just in Madrid this year. Yeah. Went to the new shopping center. Did indeed. Very good. Would definitely recommend a visit there. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. What was so what was so special about it? Well, it's a really interesting concept, you know, it's like it's quite open air. There's like uh, a water attraction where they have displays and there's lots of shops. Um, and there's even more to open as well. I would recommend oh, really? it as yeah, I would recommend it as a day out probably because there's mm. you know, restaurants, there's a cinema, there's shops. Um, yeah, it's it's very it's definitely worth checking out. And it's on the outskirts of Madrid in a place called Torrejón, is it? It is, yes. Yeah. All right, good, good. All right, good. Now, what's on the agenda today, Johnny? All right, so let's start with the unemployment situation. So this is an overall EU trend, but can be applied to Spain as well. Um, okay. And it's something we've seen in the US as well. So there's labor shortages that are increasing. However, yeah. unemployment is still quite high at the same time. Yeah. Which is an interesting situation, yeah. Yeah, I think in the U.S. they've put it down to some type of phenomenon that people are quitting their jobs to, uh, I don't know what the reason is, but the, the low-paid jobs people are quitting, right? They're sort of saying no to that. They're changing their perspectives maybe. I think they call it the big resignation or something, don't they, the or great, the big quit? The great resignation, yeah. That's, That's it. it yeah. Uh, people in low-paid jobs may be deciding to spend more time with the family, that it's not worth uh, working your butt off, as they say in the states, there to you know for a low salary, and or, or maybe they're just looking for something else, or I don't know. But here in Spain, are we experiencing something similar? Is there a big quit as well? People not um, not uh, wanting to work? Yeah, I've I've looked into it in the past, and I think to some extent uh, there maybe is some of it, some of that, although not to the mm. same extent as the US. Um, But some of the reasons that have been mentioned um, that I've seen are relating to the education system not being able to keep up with this rapid technological advancement that's gone on. Uh, So that's one factor. Another is perhaps, you know, immigration has probably reduced quite a lot over the past couple of years where immigrants from other countries would fill various jobs in sectors, namely tourism, construction, technology. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the techno the technology uh, sector is creating a lot of jobs, and countries just don't have the workforce to to fill those jobs. Yeah, that's one part the of skills. it. Skills. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then similar to that as well, you've got the example that was mentioned of you know some sectors such as maybe the automobile sector are yeah. reducing jobs, and other sectors that are increasing jobs. Mm. Um, you know, someone from the automotive sector would find it difficult to transition into a role in, in healthcare or as, as a yeah. doctor or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the big problems, but also around different countries as well, not a, not only unique to Spain, that's it. Um, exactly, yeah. I think the, the construction sector is an interesting one because obviously it is booming at the moment. There's cranes all around the, the cities, as we know, Johnny, and um, in the last construction boom, Basically, the the country just opened the borders and let everybody in who wanted to work in that sector. Right, there was people coming in from South America. There's people coming in from the the east of Europe as well to fill a lot of the jobs in that sector. And of course, the COVID nineteen pandemic. I think I read the other day means that a lot of people have gone home um, for whatever reasons. Maybe they lost their jobs at the beginning of twenty twenty. Decided to go home and and haven't decided to come back yet. Therefore, shortages in the construction sector to find workers. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so uh, so it is a bit of a, a, an anomaly, that's right. So high unemployment, but jobs that need to be filled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. That's it. All right, good. What's next? On to the next one, so the stock market. So in Spain, we, of course, have the IBEX 35, which is the, the yes. main index here. Um, for stock markets in general around the world, 2021 was uh, a pretty good year. Uh, there was a lot of good recovery in lots of the indices. However, the IBEX yeah. was a bit of an outlier uh, compared to some of these other indices. What was it, about 8%? Uh, 8%, yeah, which is 
you know, it's obviously a positive return, but when you think, yeah. you know, the DAX in Germany, the CAC 40 in France have yeah. um, increased 90%, the S&P yeah. 500, 114%. 100, sorry, what was that one? 114% recovery. Yeah. In the DAX? The, the S&P 500. Oh, the S&P, okay, yeah, the yeah. standard book. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, we're talking about a, a yeah an American um, uh, stock market there. I think they, they've done well. Uh, yeah, the IBEX still struggles again. I think we've spoken about it, haven't we, Johnny? That some of yeah. the reasons why it struggles is the uh, the composition of the of the of the the IBEX. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of traditional sectors still in the IBEX that take That's make it. up a Banks. lot of its composition. Banking. Yeah. Mainly. Yeah. Cons yeah. yeah. Construction yeah. companies. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And investors are typically looking now to technological companies, yeah. um, which are you know there's not many listed in Spain. Most are listed in the US and a couple elsewhere mm. in Europe. Yeah. And particularly with inflation going on right now as well, investors are looking for a good solid return, which is yeah. something that and when you think of where they'd find that they're probably going to turn first to the likes of the S&P 500, to the yeah. likes of the DAX. Yeah. Example. yeah, and I think the technology companies that are listed in Spain, they're not, they're, they haven't made it to the IBEX yet. They're sort of on those, um, those um, second or third level um, uh, uh, stock market indexes, I think, right? Yeah, I think so from when I've looked into it as well. So yeah, if you're an investor, then it's it's going to carry a lot more risk if you invest in one of those companies than yeah, if you invest in the likes of a, yeah. a Tesla, for example. Well, that's a company that that's grown, but I mean that's an amazing. I mean, one hundred and eight percent. Wow, that's uh, yeah. one hundred and seven. Or well, I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, yeah the 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 seven or eight percent of the ibex uh, pales in comparison. That's right, and. And again, as we as we said, Johnny, it's the it's the the, the makeup of the of that market um, of that index, and uh, uh, those companies have really been underperforming probably for a long time, especially when it comes to banks. I think there's people not willing to put their money into the into the traditional banking sectors. Yeah, well, I mean, we've talked about it in other episodes as well. Mm -hmm. Some of the challenges faced by the banks. That's it. That's it. So uh, not good if you are an investor in the ibex which unfortunately i have some money in there which i've been waiting for a recovery now for 12 years that it never comes no i i sort of check it every now and again and and it sort of goes up a little bit then down a lot and then up a little bit and down a lot and this eight yeah. percent probably wouldn't even cover the losses that have been experienced over the last you know three or four years probably yeah i, I, I don't know it's a shame yeah <laughs> well it is a shame it is a shame but uh you know if uh I think we spoke about it also that people that invested in companies like Telefonica back in 2008, before that initial crash, still haven't recovered their money, I don't think, you know. So, yeah. so uh, not good times, not good times. But there are mm -hmm. other places now, and it is easy, as we have mentioned here, John, it is easy now to invest, you know, all around the world. You don't have to rely on the local markets anymore. Yeah, you've got a lot of DIY investing apps. Uh, banks are starting to make investing more accessible to customers as that's well. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right, good. What else? All right, so on to the supermarkets. So the top supermarkets yeah. of 2021. So I'll let you have a guess first. Mercadona? Yeah, definitely one. Yeah. Well, that's like 40-something percent of the market, I think. Yeah, they have a, a huge market share. What was it? It yeah. was... It was only 25% actually, but yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. I thought it was in the 40s. Yeah, it may have been, but I think there's, there's another couple of um, supermarkets coming behind them now as well. Really? So Which ones? Up. Yeah, so Carrefour. Uh, it doesn't give their market share when I looked at it, but they have increased their market share um, quite a lot this year, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the acquisition of some new chains. Yeah. Uh, and also Lidl is going very aggressive in that sector as well. They've increased their market share to uh, 7% more or less. Yeah. 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 I've never worked out the Mercadona, the fascination people have with Mercadona. I've, I've never, because they, they don't discount. So you, yeah. never, you never see any discounts in a Mercadona supermarket or very, very rarely do you see any products discounted. Yeah, it's it's mainly uh, their own brand products as well. So Hacendado, Bosque Verde. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually bought this. There's, there's a book called about uh, the owner Juan Broid, I think is uh, yeah. his brand. Juan, yeah. Juan Broj. 
Yes, that's it, yeah. Um, so I'll have a read of that and maybe one day I can tell the story of how Mechadon has done so well. Well, it's a phenomenal story. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a privately owned company still. It's not listed. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, his family, I think, are the major shareholders. And the way they do business is very interesting is that they, they have certain providers that are apparently very loyal to Mercadona. I think they have almost have some type of exclusive contract with Mercadona. And um, they, they, you know, they have a very um, good logistic system, I think, as well, which enables them to have the shelves constantly stocked, which is uh, something that people are looking for. And I think the other thing that makes them an attractive supermarket, Johnny, is that you do go through quite quickly and you don't have the, I think we spoke about this, you don't have those long queues that you can find in some other supermarkets. And I think where, I think where little is also catching up is, is opening up those tills as soon as two or three people start to queue up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely from experience, Mercadona is incredibly quick at the checkout. That's it, um, that's it. From experience, Lil, yeah, historically I found it a bit slow, but I have, the past couple of times I've been, it has been a little bit quicker, so maybe yeah. they are starting to that's catch it. up there. Yeah. And then, and then Mercadona, um, I don't know what your local one is, but they don't, there's no dedicated butcher in, in, in Mercadona's as far as I know. All of the, all of the meat comes in, in already pre-prepared. Um, they might have a fishmonger who who prepares the fish, uh, but the rest of it is sort of lacking in fresh products, in my opinion. You know, the the fruit quality doesn't seem to be as high as some other places. Little seems to have quite good fruit. Uh, Mercadona, no, and uh, I but I don't know what the secret of Mercadona is, but they've dominated for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. I have to say though, I don't know what the secret is as well, but there's something. There's something about Mercadona that's always drawn me yeah. to it. Yeah. Maybe it's the maybe it's the 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 song. I don't know. The, <laughs> yeah. The little song catches in your, you know, it gets a little catchy little tune, so it's always in the back of your mind. Maybe that's the reason why. And and the presence, you see them everywhere you go. So so it doesn't yeah. matter whether you're in Madrid or, you know, in in another city around Spain, there's always going to be a Mercadona nowadays and it gives people that familiar um, that familiar feeling, I suppose. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it does. It does. Do you? What, what's your area like for uh, shops, Johnny? Yeah, your, we've, your new so, neighbourhood. Yeah, so it's it's pretty good. Uh, there's a there's a carrefour, a big carrefour. Yeah. Uh, there is a market on it. It's a little bit further away from yeah. from me. Um, there's Put a lot of place. Yeah, it's a little bit again. Yeah, down the other end of where I live, but um, yeah. yeah. And then there's a lot of Aoramas uh, supermarkets no, okay. as well here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably didn't see those in Madrid. Yeah, no, no, no. I've tended to find them on the on the outsides of Madrid. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're based they're based in a place close to where you play basketball in uh, Belia de San Antonio. So ah, they have okay. sort of have that distribution around the uh, Corredor de Anares, as they call it. So they're mm-hmm. quite popular in um, in in this area. Let's say. Mm. Yeah, and the road networks out there is, is very, from Arganda, yeah, it looks very, yeah. it's, yeah, nice and but, easy uh, to get out there. I, I actually like them. I mean, I don't know if they're available in other parts of Spain, but they do have a good mix of their own products, which are quite good, and, and variety with, with other products, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, um, I've been as well. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. I, I quite like it, yeah. That's it. And they have a butcher. Which uh, which do, is yes. uh, which is important for a lot of people <laughs> yeah. who like to who like to choose their meat and the cut Indeed, without yeah. having it pre prepared in the Mercadona. But anyway, all right, <laughs> all right, good. Anything else, Johnny? That was all for today's shoot. All right, short one today because I know you're in a hurry to get out of there, so uh, <laughs> we'll cut it short and we'll be, we'll be back. All right, great. Speak to you uh, next just one thing before we finish, there was a guy uh, who said he tried to get in contact with you about buying a house. Did you see that? Yes, I wrote back to him. Um, I gave him my, um, you know, millennials with money email address. So yep. if you'd like to write back to me at that email address, then more than welcome to yes. All right, no worries, Johnny. We'll uh, try and do uh, to uh, answer the questions of the viewers. All right, have a good one. Great. All right, take care, Stu. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.